Hey, welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Global Connections, and we're connecting with Rupmati Kondakar, who is our reporter, um, a global reporter, if you will, in New York, who covers uh, things like this, what happened here in Surrey, uh, in British Columbia, and can help us understand what happened. What happened is uh, Mr. Cheng Dijab was um, assassinated, killed, murdered on June 18th of this year, and it it ruminated around, and then it got pretty exciting, excited uh, in the in the press. And most recently, it's become a diplomatic issue. So we have to have the history about the what the Punjabis. We have to have the history of why India and people in India, maybe governments in India, care about this, and what were the circumstances of the assassination. It's very important we know about what happened here. Welcome to the show, everybody. Aloha, Jay, and lovely to have uh, and to meet you uh, back again so fast. So uh, let's talk about the Nijar issue, which has sensationalized the headlines and uh, to know the history about it. So you can't take an issue on its face unless you understand what is the issue about. So let's go, Jay. It's going to be a fun episode. Okay, tell us about the history. We need to know, okay. you know, the entire um, <laughs> background of what happened so we can appreciate um, the circumstances. Okay, go. Yeah, so, so Jay, uh, when Justin Trudeau stands up in parliament and blames agents of the Indian government to kill, uh, assassinate Nijar, it was a direct attack on a government, isn't it? It was sensational that somebody standing up and blaming a democratic government for assassination. So now, I'll just tell you, in brief, the history of the Khalistan movement. Now, the Khalistan movement seeks to create an independent Sikh state. Now, Sikh is a community in which they tie the turban. They have the five sacred keys, that is the kirpan, the, the kesh, the long hair. And they have these particular five things which they... Uh, follow and so they are known as Sikh okay but this Sikh which is calling for the creation of an independent Khalistan state out of the Punjab state already existing Punjab state of India now my mom told me this that 70% of the Punjab state was given to Pakistan during partition and 20 30% has stayed back in India 30% only 54% are Sikh community in India, the rest of the uh, um, different communities that live in India, out of 54% Jay, there is a huge chunk of uh, Sardar, uh, Sikh people who have given their, up their lives for India. Their gurus are, hold, uh, are held sacred by all Indians alike, you know. Um, Modi has celebrated Veer Balan Divas for their guru. Uh, I mean, there is no discrimination between a Sikh and a Hindu. In 1970, this idea was given by Dr. Jagjit Chauhan, a Sikh who was living uh, in uh, uh, Canada, and he called, he, he called himself President of Khalistan and started printing out currency and passports. Now, you see, when you talk like this, that it's my state, it's a Khalistan state in exile, and I'm going to print my own passport and my own currency, that means you're starting a separatist movement. Correct? So now when you see this Khalistan movement finds very little resonance with Sikhs in India. There are no takers for this in India. That's why we don't have a, sen a sensationalization of this issue as much in India as it is outside. For Sikhs in India, loyalty to the country is as important. Uh, they don't support this extremist uh, um, issue of uh, creating a state out of an uh, existing country. How can you carve it out? And when you say they want to carve out the state, uh, their history is uh, painted with blood. Why? Because they uh, were involved in the assassination of uh, Chief Minister Bian of uh, uh, Punjab. Assassination of Indra Gandhi. Her bodyguard was of Sikh community and uh, he supported the Khalistan movement and he shot her uh, with, I mean, uh, a flurry of bullets. Now, Jay, a uh, couple of weeks back, there was a float in Canada, 
in June, there was a float in Canada which showed the assassination of Prime Minister Indira Gandhi on and the Indian government objected to this and wrote to Trudeau to stop this. So he replied that it is freedom of expression. Okay? And then uh, you see Indira Gandhi was the one in 1982 she had asked for the extradition of uh, a, a Khalistani activist known as Parmar. So this he, uh, Justin Trudeau's father, Pierre Trudeau, refused because he said allegiance of the Indians to the Queen was not enough. They were just recognizing her as the head of the state and not of the, con like, it was just a constitutional head, not a real head. So they did not have allegiance, so we will not extradite Parman. And Parman was the one who was involved in the hijacking of Air India. And that disaster was the biggest airline disaster before 9-11 and it killed 328 on the board, 286 for Canadian citizens. So you see assassination of a chief minister of a state, assassination of a prime minister of a country, uh, 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 the falling of Air India, one entire airplane. They are not peace-loving uh, uh, movement. It's not a peace-loving movement. The movement was crushed in India by a Sikh himself, KPS Gill. And he was very um, shrewd in his uh, encounters and he, he made sure that this movement does not exist in India. Now, when we see that Nijar, the, uh, the person who's killed, you know, Trudeau presents him as a plumber. So it's his day job. But he is visiting Pakistan uh, and getting funding from the ISI of Pakistan. Uh, it's like always, he was the chief of the band Khalistan Tiger Force, T-A-T-F. Now, these are facts, Jay. It's like, you know, the, the port is uh, in all over the newspapers. It's like calling Osama an engineer. Same way, uh, Nijar was a plumber. But what is he doing? He's using the Gurudwaras, which is a place of worship. I had explained to you in COVID times, Langars used to help. People, so uh, Sikh community and uh, Indian community are no different. They are one and the same. But this Palestinian movement has taken a whole new uh, meaning because they're using the same Gurudwaras as meeting points. And now it's a movement of profit, ego. And uh, there is a lot of, uh, what do you say? It's extremism. And any man who's extremist or a separatist cannot be supported by a democratic government. Now let's bring in why Justin Trudeau is supporting this. You know, because his 11 seat support from Khalistani uh, Jagmeet Singh of uh, Canada, who is uh, very much a supporter of the Khalistani movement. Justin Trudeau's government is supported because of this 11 seat support from Jagmeet Singh. So he is the one who drives Justin's uh, support for the Khalistan movement. Now, the National Security Agency of India, when it declares a 1 million um, rupee reward on uh, Nijar, I mean, he is a terrorist. He is wanted. He is wanted by the Interpol. In 2012, he has gone to Pakistan occupied Kashmir. He's collect, uh, Pakistan occupied uh, uh, Punjab, collected funds, and uh, come to India. You know, this is uh, going on deaf years because he was just presented as a Canadian citizen. When did he become a Canadian citizen? He became after he was illegally staying in Canada for five to ten years. I mean, uh, this guy has got a shady uh, past and future and present. So, leave that aside. Okay, we agree. But the day Justin Trudeau says that Nijar has been killed by agents of the Indian government, the very next day, another Khalistani leader known as Sukha was killed. Okay? And a rival gang uh, from Lawrence Bishnoi claimed responsibility that we killed, it, killed him. So immediately, immediately the very next day, a same killing of the same uh, order takes place and it's rival gang. Now, the investigating agency for Nijar's killing had let out a, uh, um, a call that 
to everybody, please, if anybody has leads, please come and inform us. Is this credible enough that Justin Trudeau gets up in parliament and talks from government to government? It's not. I feel it's not. He should let evidence come out and then talk. Now, he says that he's got it from the Five Eyes Intelligence Network, that is US, UK, Britain, uh, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. These are the five countries who make up the Five Eyes Intelligence Network. But CJ, none of them are coming out in pure support of him. They all are asking for a thorough investigation. So as Prime Minister of a country, you have to wait for credible conclusions, not credible evidence before you point fingers at the government. And not only did he stand up and say this, he dismissed a diplomat, Indian diplomat. He issued a travel advisory. India replied in kind. And third was when he said that uh, uh, his statement, India has now understood that it cannot, uh, the Khalistan movement is in Canada. So their properties which are in India are the right of the Indian government. They sealed it. Their bank accounts are sealed. Their properties which were, you know, in flamboyant pro properties in India, they are taken away by the government. And Canadians are not allowed to enter India. So India can do its best to protect itself from uh, this kind of separatist movement. You cannot allow somebody who is capable of assassinating the head of the country to come in. I mean, they are violent. And it's a very minute minority which is dealing with huge funding, Jay. Huge funding in the sense that I'll tell you, when there was a farmer's bill that was passed, these guys gave $3 million to Rihanna for a single tweet. So this is the kind of money that is flowing in. And uh, Pannu, another leader who's over there, he's an American, but he talks about the next day that Trudeau says this, he, he gets up on uh, and uh, blurts it out that all Hindus should leave Canada immediately. So there is no uh, clamp down by the government on him. So what about Justin Trudeau risking the lives of the many Hindus that stay there? Now, Indians are not just Sikh. Indians are not just Hindus. Indians are a huge community of different, different faiths and religions and everybody. And they are working population. Now, when Ca India refused to grant uh, visas to Canadians, Justin Trudeau cannot reply in kind and say, we do not issue visas to Indians. Tell me why. Because a huge chunk of Canadian economy depends on skilled Indian labor and Indian students. So it's, uh, it's a source of income for the Canadian government, Jay. This skilled labor and students who, who almost, in Punjab, they almost sell their land and they go, go over there. In many states, they go for a better life and everything. But now the taxation, the mortgage, everything is making life so difficult over there. You have skilled labor who's going for cab driving and all that. So standard of living is not that high as it was portrayed to be. But still, making Canada to support the Khalistan movement is as good as going against the Indian government. And when you are supporting the Khalistan government, opposite is overtly you are blaming the Indian government that you killed this Najat without any credible evidence, Jay. They still do not have conclusive evidence. He is just saying, come into the uh, investigation. But where? <laughs> where do you come in? I mean, there has to be a point in which you say that these people were involved uh, and diplomats are being threatened. The same situation happened in... Uh, our temples are being vandalized in Canada. The same situation happened in Australia. And uh, when he had come in, uh, the Australian Prime Minister had come in, Mr. Mobadi had requested him to take care of the Khalistan movement, he cracked down on extremists. It doesn't mean you crack down on everybody, but he cracked down on them and he gave protection to the temples, he gave protection to the council. That is the way to go about it. 
not say that. And I told you, it is vote bank politics. Jagmeet Singh, the pro Khalistani leader who is given an 11 support, 11 seat support to Trudeau, is the one who is driving his Khalistan pro pro Khalistan uh, tactics. This is a little history on it. Well, you know, the only thing I saw in the newspaper that suggested it was the Indian government was this leap of logic about um, the fact that there were two automobiles involved in the killing and half a dozen people were involved. And I yes. guess, you know, the, of course, the, the historical background you described suggests that India is not happy um, with this, um, this secessionist movement. Um, however, that's really not enough to reach a conclusion that it was the Indian government that set it up. So this investigation is going to be pretty hard because it doesn't sound like there's any real evidence connecting it with the Indian government. But just as a, you know, just as a, a sort of a gestalt reaction to Rupmani, this isn't something that Modi would do. This is not something that, um, that the Indian government would do. The Indian government doesn't do this. No, absolutely. The very next day, Jay, the very next day, Sukha, an uh, equal leader as Nijar, he was killed. I mean, you Google Google Nijar and you see him standing with an AK-47. It's it's up on Google. Just Google him, Nijar, and you see him with an AK-47. Is he a plumber? I mean, <laughs> what are you talking? It, it's very difficult to say that he's just a plumber. And uh, gang war and gang war and this politics of killing is because Jay, a lot of funding is involved. There is a lot of profit which is being made. See, you can't say that I will carve out um, an orthodox Christian a state a fictional name out of Texas. I want it. Somebody sitting in Australia will say I want something out of Texas. Or it can't be done. I mean, you just you can't say, okay, I, I can't do that. Because that's a fully functional state with a democratic uh, uh, setup and it's working as a federal, uh, under the federal government. There is a lot of machinery involved, infrastructure. How can you carve it and give it? Already a state called Pakistan has been carved out of India during our independence. After that, they just, it's a fictional motivation that is kept in front of youth. They are, they are, they are, they're given a lot of money for it. And this extremism is jingoism in which you feel that maybe I can take part in it, but it's not possible. I told you, uh, issuing passports and currency of a fictional state, it doesn't make any sense. No. Um, so um, what I get is that there's a, an undercurrent of racism um, uh, with Trudeau against, and maybe others, you know, in Canada who just don't like Indians, period. Uh, yes. And, th and this is a way for them to express that racism. And the Surrey in British Columbia is largely Indian, all kinds of Indians, not just yes. Sikhs, but all kinds of Indians. And you know, it suggests to me um, that Trudeau uh, made a huge mistake here, a series of mistakes. Would you agree that his public statements and his actions on behalf of the Canadian government were a series of mistakes? Absolutely, absolutely, yes, 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 emphatically, yes. Because Jay, he is making the biggest mistake of his life by thinking that this Khalistani Sikhs make up the entire Indian population. Khalistani Sikhs do not make up even the Sikh population. I mean, Sikhs are the ones who are given, have given their lives for our country. They are part, integral part of the Hindu culture. Indian way of life, uh, it's its never, you cannot separate a Hindu and a Sikh. They're together. I mean, there is no distinction in our style of praying, our style of eating, our style of living. It's the same. There is no difference. And uh, see our army. And I told you the person who uh, thwarted the movement in Khalistan, in Punjab, or Khalistan movement in Punjab was instead of KPS Gill, given the highest honors in India. Sardarji are respected with. Uh, a lot of, uh, they have, uh, they're, they're cherished in Indian society. And their gurus, we have their gurus which are revered amongst the Hindu uh, community itself. So there is no distinction. But Trudeau is thinking there is such a massive support for the Khalistani uh, movement that he can get away with this. But he doesn't understand. He's putting our Hindu population 
itself at risk over there. The rest of the population who are not supporting the Palestinians are at risk. Now you see, they have these yellow flags. They take the tricolor and they, they kick it around. They hit Modi's uh, uh, effigies. So this kind of extremism is uh, uncalled for. But you see on the opposite side of the road, you will see Indians with tricolors trying to say that, no, we support India. Khalistan is a separatist movement. It's a full stop on that. You can't say that a separatist movement is good or a separatist movement is bad. A separatist movement which is uh, which has tainted itself with extremism uh, and violence is never good. You, you know, and, but, uh, in part, you know, the press has created this because it, yes. uh, it's a sort of a, um, it's a, it's reminiscent of what happened to Khashoggi. Uh, yes. In Istanbul a few years ago, and in that case, uh, Saudi was clearly responsible. Um, that uh, BMS, um, you know, organized it, and uh, they they killed Khashoggi at his instructions, and that pretty much has come out. And although Trump, you know, uh, bypassed that and forgave him, the um, fact is that um, it's clear enough that. That Saudi did that, so the, the press is is reminiscing on what happened in Turkey uh, with Khashoggi. Uh, furthermore, you know, there's been all this um, criticism of the police. Now, this, this assassination took place on June 18th. June 18th is a long time ago, and it was yes. looking under the hood, and there were those people who you know had an agenda, and they were. Um, trying to make, um, you know, a, a, a claim that the police were, were burying this and the police did not respond and the police did not investigate. So you get, um, you get a, a, a kind of reminiscence of the American issue about how the police are at fault for failing to investigate. And I think the press makes much more of that uh, than they, they should. I don't I haven't found anything to suggest that the RCMP uh, or the Surrey police are trying to bury this, um, but the press is making that that connection. So, um, you know, what you have is a whole bunch of factors that are oh. leaning through dough who make a big thing of it, and 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 that makes it political, doesn't it? He's doing this to satisfy some political group. Um, that is trying to animate the issue. Am I right? Right, Jay. Now, Khashoggi had a personal uh, agenda with uh, Salman. Of he's a he's a he's a monarch over there. Modi is a pan India elected member of 1.4 billion people who have popularly voted him into power. And Nijjar had no personal enmity with Modi. There was no one on one with Modi to equate. Khashoggi is murdered with Nijar's killing. There is a big war, in gang war between Nijar's people and the opponents over there. The Boldi uh, Lawrence Bishnoi, these are the names who, who are the gang war people, rival gangs. You can't involve a prime minister who is democratically elected and present him to be an authoritarian because he is not. He has been popularly elected by 1.4 billion people. Majority democracy at its best, at its peak. I mean, people have accepted him. People have chosen him. He works for the people. Nijal has no personal vendetta with Modi. That Modi will order agents of the government to go and kill uh, him. NIA, the National Investigation Agency, declared him a terrorist in 2000. Went to the Interpol. There uh, and got him declared. He was declared by the Interpol. He was declared a terrorist by the Interpol. So when Justin Trudeau talks about rule of the law and rule abiding states and order of the world, he should understand India is one who follows the rule based global order. It has never gone outside the global order. And uh, Jay, uh, this happened in June. Trudeau was in Delhi. A few days, a couple of weeks back, he could have spoken this to uh, Modi. But you know the tantrums that happened with uh, Justin Trudeau? It gives a big sign of his nervousness. He was he was allotted the uh, 
the Leela Hotel for his entourage and he was given the presidential suite. He refused to take the presidential suite and he said, I want a smaller room. I didn't want to stay in the presidential suite, but the diplomatic uh, logistics, they had given bulletproof glass and, you know, the necessary um, big bats about the uh, welcome, but uh, he refused it. And then when his plane broke down, he stayed an extra two days in India. Now a head of state who has got two days to while away in India, when the when uh, Modi offered him uh, Air Air India One to go back, he refused. I mean, it shows a lot of disrespect. It shows a lot of distrust. And well, where we are right now is that uh, at a low ebb in terms yes. of diplomatic relationship, the national relationship um, between Canada and India. I never would have thought this would happen. I would have no. thought two democracies, they got to get along, appreciate, understand each other, not attack each other this way. So we've examined how Trudeau made mistakes in terms of yeah. dealing with this and his public statements about it and his actions about it. But what about Modi? I mean, is he responsible for the decline in the relationship uh, between Canada and India? Uh, is there anything else he could have done better to avoid this low ebb that we have now? Uh, in this case, uh, Jay, Justin Trudeau made the statement. Justin, Justin Trudeau withdrew the diplomats and he issued the travel advice. Three aggressive moves by Justin Trudeau. And India has not done anything aggressive against, just given a tit for tat and issued an advisory that we will not issue any visa to the Canadians. And these OCIs which are given, you know why? Because isn't, when, isn't that a little over the top? No, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because these people are capable of assassination, sensational assassinations. Because they need to grab headlines, they need to grab media attention. So now, fueled by the support of a Canadian government premier. They are going to send people who will try to come in and create havoc with bombings, hijackings. So the entry of people in this phase has to be vetted very prominently. Otherwise, it's a, uh, it's a security hazard to India itself. Because we have so many people going and coming in. Now who will come in after this are going to be fueled by anger, by vengeance. They want to see something sensational happen. And Justin Trudeau has just given the right amount of uh, gasoline to light up such a fire. Mm. So, yeah. Shane, how is this going to play out? But right now, we have a fire burning in terms of yes. relations. And, uh, 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 you know, even assuming that it's that the fire was started with or, or Trudeau poured you know, get gasoline on it to make it burn ever brighter. Um, can't um, uh, Narendra Modi do something to pull the situation, um, to um, resolve this tension, to explain to Trudeau and the people, uh, you know, that this, this is not an appropriate conclusion to make and it's not appropriate in terms of diplomatic relations. We in the West cannot afford to have Canada arguing with India. And the India can afford to be arguing with Canada because Canada kind of represents the West. So uh, what can we do to pull this off? Uh, Jay, Mohali did the thing that he could, that he has uh, taken over there, the land that they own in India. He has not done anything offensive against Canada. Now, the, but... Trudeau has done something directly pointing fingers at the government of India. He, Modi in no words has said it, that I will, uh, this is the government of Canada. Has one statement, one line coming from Modi? No. Because you have Justin Trudeau re repeating his statement, backing his statement. Where is the credible evidence? I mean, there are just two words which is very basic and they have to give the credible evidence before you point out at a country and of the West, 
I mean, right now, everybody has independent relations with each other. But Canada trying to garner the support of the other five states because Australia has faced a Khalistani uh, movement in Australia, but they have cornered it very well. They bring it in control. Rishi Sona, UK, they have uh, uh, cornered the Khalistan movement in UK. But Trudeau refuses to touch the Khalistan movement. Acceptable that he is refusing. Ignore it. Ignore it. But don't support them. When he supports it, he is going against the Indian government because it's a separatist government against the government of India. So, Jay, he is taking very direct action. Trudeau is taking unfold for its non-diplomatic. First part, first is non-diplomatic to talk about a country like that, that the uh, agents of the country, I mean, he could not make about uh, a Jewish uh, person we gave a standing ovation to a Jewish uh, uh, Nazi, uh, Jewish slayer, a Nazi who has killed thousands of Jews. I mean, he did not vet information about the Nazi who has caused, who has a big part in the Holocaust. So, I mean, he doesn't vet his information. He doesn't think before he speaks. Mm. So, this kind well, of... Well, uh, he still seems young, you know. Relative to Pierre, he still seems young. But you know, it, Pierre was very, 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 very mature when. Is the press in Canada explaining this to him, or is the press also pouring fuel on the fire? Pierre uh, Trudeau was very mature when he made the decision not to extradite Parma at that time. He caused the assassinations. And Trudeau is also a mature man. He knows what he should do. But vote politics, everything. I mean, at one point of time, you understand that this man is not uh, not thinking a lot before he speaks to him. He's causing a lot of problems, a lot of... There was a G20 which happened, uh, global meet that happened. He could have easily raised it in a bilateral. Jay, in October, they have... Canada has a big trade agreement uh, meeting with India. He could have raised it one-on-one -on -one that time. There are many avenues to raise this issue, but to raise it in this cannot be just uh, nullified as immaturity. There is a lot of thinking to it because he is pleasing Jagmeet Singh. He's pleasing the Khalistan movement, thinking that they will support him. But Khalistan is not India. Khalistanis are not Sikhs. And uh, Sikhs are part of India. Khalistan is not a part of India. Khalistanis can never be a part of India. Well, I hope it cools off soon, but you know, something that we talked about a few minutes ago troubles me, and that is that, you know, this is not just between India and Canada. India is yes. part of BRICS, um, you know, and there's this whole movement in the world going on about dividing up, you know, the East and the West. Uh, and you and I have talked about that before. And so the question is, where does the U.S. and U.S. allies in, in Europe, for example, uh, fit on this? Where, where are, they, are they going um, to support Trudeau, however right or wrong he is? Or are they going to support India and Modi? Uh, are they going to get involved in the public conversation about it? Are they going to let these two guys uh, think it out? Um, are they going to let this movement uh, run rampant over Western Canada? Uh, are they are they going to get involved in some kind of solution, or are they just going to treat it as the global divisiveness that is growing among nations? Yeah, Jay, the immediate reaction of the Indian government was that it, the Justin Trudeau statements are absurd and motivated. And U.S. said that we will wait out for the investigation to happen and uh, India will be part of the uh, interrogation or whatever they want. And nobody refused. There's been no refusal from India to say that we will not be part of an investigation. But show us where we have to be part of. That was the statement. Australia, U.K. refused to come in. Uh, uh, Australia and yeah, U.K. refused to come in between this. So the Western countries uh, are taking it on the prema facing or rather they're taking the history into account and they are keeping the hands a little bit away from Trudeau right now for supporting Trudeau because just by using words like rule of the law 
an order based uh, um, uh, system these are not words you can use in front of the world's largest democracy which has functioned very uh, impeccably for 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 as long as it existed i mean show sure, record where you have seen india go into violence in another country we have faced wars inside our country but we have never gone and you know uh, attacked any country so this kind of uh, talk that india is the history shitter in uh, uh, assassinations or anything is uh, is absurd really absurd and in a matter of two weeks he's up china he's up russia he's up I india i mean what is he trying to do he's trying to divide east and west what is he trying to do so getting uh, zelsinski to into canada getting a nazi who martyred so many jews into into the house of commons and giving him standing ovation twice a convoy to support zelsinski which is larger than a biden's convoy i mean um, he was the one who requested modi uh, to he insisted not request insisted that zelsinski be part of the g20 but j the g20 was such a big agenda this time they wanted to resolve it they wanted to uh, you know there were there were already so many invitees so and the statement was unanimously passed so getting zelsinski could have caused a bit of hustle in that so they refused his insistence and he he made it very clear that he was not uh, accepting of the g20 he was very grumpy the whole time if you see his uh, videos so i mean justin trudeau was carrying a grudge against cynthia for a very long time he needed to vent it out but he vent it out by supporting an extremist violent highly dysfunctional movement which is not indian which is not sikh and which is not supported by anybody he is putting life of hindus indians who are not sikh in uh, canada at risk and canada's biggest income of skilled indian labor and students is definitely going to be closed now well, you know the problem is that um, you know the the racist genie is out of the box and uh, yes. the, the statements he made will linger. Um, whatever happens in this investigation they're doing, and I suspect the investigation is going to go nowhere. Um, no, man. But the stain it leaves on uh, the relationship of, the, of Canada and India, and the East and the West for that matter, is an ongoing problem that you're right. Putin is happy to see this kind of device. Yes. So that means that you and I have to follow this. It's yes, it's good. Sure. There are implications yet to come. Um, there are solutions, hopefully, in the wings, and you and I will examine them going forward. Thank you so much, Rupmati. Rupmati Kandakar, uh, our reporter that covers global issues and so well. We'll see you next time soon, Rupmati.